Dajia hao. My name is Sandra Chow, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how thinking global is the new normal. But before I dive into this entire statement, I'd like us to look at the word normal. What is normal? Well, according to the Oxford Dictionary, normal is conforming to a standard, usual, typical, or expected. Now, this makes a lot of sense to me. However, I think that word a is just a little bit too small, because usually being typical, or usual, or expected, it depends highly on context, and context can depend on a myriad of things, including politics, traditions, location, time, and culture. Take, for example, author and designer Yang Liu, who wrote a fascinating book highlighting the differences between the East and West. Using simple illustration, Yang points out that normal can look, feel, and even taste different depending on the context. Here, normal is admiring birds on branches, whereas normal in a different context could be admiring birds on some special types of branches. Or take the use of, of language, where it used to be normal to dial a number. That doesn't quite make much sense nowadays. In fact, our current generation is left wondering why we don't speak a number into Siri instead. And what about in education? What is normal when it comes to our classrooms? What is usual, typical, or expected? Is it this, this, or this? Now, there's nothing wrong with these practices. However, does this make sense in our context? Is this normal for us as adults? And if our answer is no, we need to think thoughtfully about what is. Perhaps it's using technology like translation tools that allow us to welcome newcomers who are coming from a different country, so that they feel welcome and accepted when coming to, into a classroom. Or perhaps. It's using technology to venture into different places and explore new worlds without having to worry about buses and airplanes, passports, or visas, simply by using VR and AR technology. Students, no matter what their age or socioeconomic background, can go to visit the Taj Mahal, or walk on the Great Wall, or go to the climb Mount Everest. And explore the challenges of living in a refugee camp simply by using immersive technology. Or what about connecting live <laughs> through classrooms and experts using live video conferencing? Using video conferencing, we can see and hear the people we are interviewing right there and then. Or taking interest in problem solving and using real-world problems to come up with meaningful solutions that rally around the sustainable development goals. But if global education is already the new normal, we owe it to ourselves to go beyond the normal when thinking about global education. You know, we had the same conversation about technology in the past. You know the one. Where we can't teach our students how we were taught in the past because we need to think ahead to their future. In fact, my friend and fellow educator Micah Shippey often likes to say that our most advanced technology nowadays is going to be the most obsolete technology for our students in their future. So then, what does that mean to boldly go where no one has gone before when it comes to global education? How might we pioneer as global imagineers, predicting and imagining the global context that our students are going to be in, while as educators preparing them for the knowledge and skills and attitudes that they need to thrive in that environment? Thankfully, we already have some organizations, researchers, and educators who have charted the course and given us vocabulary such as global competencies, intercultural skills. Global ready and cross-cultural communications. Here's one by the Cultural Intelligence Center. They define cultural intelligence as the ability for somebody to relate and work effectively in a culturally diverse situation. Their focus is upon employment readiness 
and whether an a per, or not a person has the motivation, knowledge, skills, and actions in order to be successful in the workplace. While the OECD looks at the definition of global competencies with more of a political and humanitarian viewpoint. Sometimes people call this global citizenship, and they focus upon the ability to act for well-being and sustainable development. This ties well with the sustainable development goals developed by the United Nations. One other published research has rallied around unifying the ideas of the government, business, and educator sec education sectors. Their work has looked at building an individual's internal and external readiness so that they are able to work in a broad spectrum of situations. Now, my role today is not to debate around the terminology and around research, but look at what we need to do as educators to prepare our future generation for what's to come. It is clear that we really need to deepen our students' knowledge and understanding about the world around them, locally and globally. This involves geography, history, values, traditions, and perceptions. We also need to develop our students' skills and abilities in order to be impactful in a diverse and globally changing society. This involves building up their thinking, communication, creativity, flexibility, and collaboration skills. But more importantly, we need to emphasize the importance of attitudes and empathy so that they can interact with people with varying perspectives, ideas, and backgrounds. Now, some of you might say, we've been doing this all along. I mean, we're in an IB school. We International mindedness is in our DNA. And to this, I say, you're absolutely right. We are already doing this. And in some cases, in some cases we are doing this really well. So please, Continue to do the good work that you are doing, but never lose sight of what's ahead. Keep a pulse of what's on the horizon so that we can be reflective practitioners and be ready to go beyond the normal when necessary. For example, continue with the normal when it comes to deepening the knowledge and understanding of our students. This includes embracing technology so that they have access to images, media, and stories that give them a variety of of diverse understanding. Continue to use sites that allow them to use interactive maps, VR, and connect with others virtually so that they can have first-hand stories from those who are, are learning about them. But also consider going beyond the normal, which might mean rather than having our students be consumers of the information, have them be global content creators and storytellers guiding students so that they can investigate their own environment, communities, and tell their own stories and share it with the world so that others can gain perspective of, perspectives of their communities as well. Continuing with the normal might also mean continuing to help our students build their 21st century skills like the six C's by giving them authentic and meaningful inquiry-based collaborative projects for them to explore. This might include passion projects, 20 time projects, or personal projects are examples of just such meaningful explorations. But going beyond the normal might mean that the educators are going to push our students to pursue projects that, in topics and areas that they might not be comfortable with and to go outside of their comfort zone by working with people who might stretch their thinking, perspectives, and experiences. This will allow their skills and abilities to be transferable in any global setting. And finally, go, continuing with the normal means to continue instilling positive attitudes and empathy towards others by fostering open mindsets, compassion, and flexibility. These attitudes are essential since global interactions continue to increase, and this will help them to encourage um, relationships that are growing more and more complex. So pursue ideas such as character education, values, and good sportsmanship. But going beyond the normal might also mean for us to model vulnerability and to take risks, like standing here at a TEDx stage, to share boldly, to receive generously, and to merge our, our 
perspectives so that we can incubate and create new ideas together. I work in a bilingual school called Keystone Academy, where daily I interact with, work, with people who sometimes think and act and perceive ideas in similar ways that I do. But I also work with people who have completely different languages, paradigms, and perceptions of how things should be done. Now, how does one work and function in such a situation? What is the norm when you have these kind of diversity? Well, I can't speak for all of you, but I know my norm would be to stick to those who are similar to me and to push for my own perspectives and make people um, follow my own ideas. But going beyond the normal means to take risks and, and be vulnerable. It might mean sitting at a lunch table knowing fully well that I won't be able to necessarily understand everything that is there. But it will mean I'll build connections and meaningful relationships with people. Or presenting my ideas in a language that is not my own and feeling vulnerable and inadequate. But that will build my confidence and skill sets. Or digging deeper into ideas and decisions that I don't quite understand, but it will help me to keep myself open-minded. Imagine what might happen if we all went beyond the normal. It's not easy to be pioneers, and I don't clearly know what lies ahead or in the future for our students, but if we keep striving forward and boldly go beyond normal, think of all the possibilities. Thank you.